Thank you, Asa. Uh, we the unprecedented uh, shifts to remote learning uh, during, uh, because of the pandemic. Uh, question in everyone's mind is what kind of learning happened during the years of the pandemic. Uh, this paper like try to answer that question, but uh, we'd like to also, as a backdrop, mention that uh, you, almost all of you know that um, uh, the 2018 PISA testing 15 years old, 15 year olds, and uh, 2019 teams testing grade four showed that uh, performed uh, poorly compared to other countries. So uh, I'll try to describe what happened in our schools uh, during the, uh, uh, using DPED's uh, administrative data and try to understand the patterns uh, using a national representative survey data collected by uh, at the beginning of the pandemic by the Philippine Statistics Authority. Next slide, please. Uh, I'll be using this uh, outline. Uh, present the objectives and, and methodology. I will usually fo followed by uh, a description, short description of government responses, the learner responses using uh, DEPED data. And I'll describe uh, the reachability of students and home support using national representative survey uh, by the PSA. And I conclude the summary and recommendations. Uh, next slide, please. Um, I designed this study with four uh, specific objectives, uh, namely to, to describe the responses of the education sector to the pandemic and describe how the students uh, reacted to the reuse of the offered learning modalities in the schools and explain the pattern of the learning modality using the household data, uh, although this is a separate data set, and uh, draw insights and uh, recommendations to guide implementations of remote learning. Next slide, please. Uh, the study used two, uh, two data sets. One is the school level enrollment data by learning modality from the Education Management Information System Division of the Planning Service of the PED. Uh, this data has grade levels and types of schools. Uh, the original study uh, used uh, the school year 2020-2021, but later we were able to obtain similar data sets for the succeeding two school years. Uh, is, uh, 2021, 2022, and 2022, 2023. Uh, and the other data that we use is the 2020 Annual Poverty Indicator Survey, which provides enrollment data by level and type of school, as well as the availability of household amenities, such as internet, connection, TV, radio, mm -hmm. cell phone, and even household income. I also tried to find a correlates of having internet connection at home. And this analysis used the DICT National ICT Household Survey Merging uh, using regions. Uh, let me now describe the government response to the pandemic. Next slide, please. So uh, in, in the pandemic struck in March 2020, DEPED uh, prepared the Basic Education Continuity Plan, or BELCP, uh, to guide the education sector's response. It listed different learning delivery modes that could be used, including face-to-face, -face, uh, where there are low-risk distance learning modes, including print, online TV and radio, and a combination of this called blended and homeschooling. Uh, as we know, the government uh, has allowed face-to-face -face learning starting school year 2021-2022. And another important uh, feature in the, is the streamlining of the learning competencies from 14,171 to 5,600 for a reduction of about 60%, uh, calling this reduced set as the most essential learning competencies of MELCs. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this slide accompanying the BLCP are several laws and department orders as, as the Bayanihan, uh, the important feature of which is includes authorizing the hiring of learning support aids or LSAs, uh, or teacher assistance to help in the production and reproduction of modular learning materials, uh, and a special budget for uh, financing uh, acquisition of laptops, internet, connection load, uh, the DepEd TV and radio, and subsidies and allowances and learning modules. In addition, DepEd uh, uh, orders were also issued to cover assessment and grading uh, and the utilization of, and the qualification of the LSAs. For me, the most important revealing aspect for 
for which we have data to back up our claims is the learner's responses to the offered learning modalities. This is what we discuss in the next slide. Next slide, please. Trying to understand what happened in basic education, it was fortunate that EPED included data gathering on the learning modality utilized by students uh, uh, for school year 2020-21, which we all know went into remote learning when the pandemic hit in March 2020. This was the most extensive data set that can uh, describe what happened during that school year in the next two, two years. Uh, we would have wanted to know the extent of learning as well, but unfortunately, we were not able to get data if that is available. This graph summarizes a very informative uh, pattern of learning modality. One important pattern is that regardless of the level, almost all public school students use printed modules, 90% in elementary, 83% uh, in junior high school, and 80% in senior high school. Uh, on the other hand, we only see a considerable proportion of online uh, uh, students uh, using online learning in private schools with 46% elementary, 36% in uh, junior high school, and 44% in junior high school. Many describe this as a reflection of the digital divide, uh, uh, in this case, uh, between public and private schools. Another pattern that uh, where there is a considerable online learning uh, in private schools, there is also considerable blended learning. A likely explanation for this is as un unre unreliable internet connection. The state of the internet connection where it is available is such that pure online learning cannot be continuously conducted and blended learning uh, or a combination of the learning modes is necessary. Finally, we I would like also to highlight that TV and radio did not figure prominently among the learning modes. This fact is, very, is important because we will see later that many of households have TV and radio. To better understand this general pattern, an important question that comes to mind is whether this is more because of the lack of capacity to deliver online learning in schools, or even if available uh, capacities, uh, uh, even with available capacities in schools, the households cannot avail of the online learning. I answer this in two ways. Uh, one is to look at the distribution by area, by region. Uh, the lack of basic internet infrastructure can explain uh, an area's lack of online learning. The other one is use of the availability of internet connection, uh, even with availability of internet connection in the area and the amenities of the uh, allow what's kind of learning may also explain the, uh, this disparity. The next slide is devoted to this. But before this, let us look at, uh, as I've said, we have data of the same for, this is for school years 2020, 2021, the beginning of the pandemic. And we have data for the next two years. So I'll next uh, slide, please. Show you the one ha happening in 2022, 2023. Uh, the, the data for school year 2021 to 2022 is, uh, has almost the same pattern as 2020, 2021. So here, uh, we have now face-to-face. -face. This is the khaki color in the graph uh, as, as shown. Uh, more of the public school students are in face-to-face -face compared to private. In contrast, more students in private schools are in blended modality compared to public school students. So a noticeable is that the proportion of online students have been reduced to single digits, and uh, one in 10 public schools are still in printed uh, modules. Trying to understand this uh, national pattern, let's start uh, with the distribution of learning modality by regions and by level. And it's, uh, uh, this graph uh, tells you what happened in 2021 for the elementary and public and private. And the graph on the left is, uh, shows the distribution of learning modality for public elementary. The graph on the right is the corresponding graph of private schools. For public schools is shown that, except for NCR, where the proportion of students printed module is uh, only 50%, more than 80% of students are in printed module for the, rest, for the rest of the regions. Now compare that with a graph on the right, uh, describing the distribution in private schools. We see that as much as 65% of students in private schools are using online mode in, in the NCR. This graph tells us that uh, just comparing the public and private, both NCR will tell you that, that the internet availability in the area is not the one that drives the access to online modality. 
Internet may be available in the area, but the disparity in the mode of access revealed that public school students cannot afford online access, at least the kind of access to conducive to online learning. Not having access at home and intermittent access are not uh, conducive for online learning. Next slide, please. This is what happened in uh, uh, the um, school year 2022 2023. As mentioned uh, 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 earlier, they already have a uh, face to face at, at, at this level, as this graph tells you distribution by region. Most of the regions, except for BARM, two, uh, six, uh, region two, six, eight, nine, and four A, have a majority of uh, public school students on face to face. Uh, for the aforementioned range of the, uh, the blended learning are the modal groups. For private schools, then on the other hand, more students are in blended learning than in face-to-face, -face, except, except for few regions like Caraga, Region 12, and 4B. Next slide, please. Uh, this is for junior high school, junior high school. Not surprisingly, this pattern is repeated uh, in, and in, in, in the next level, junior high school, in most public and, 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 and private. Uh, again, uh, so except in the NCR, there's all the, where there's considerable online students and blended mode uh, and private junior high school students, a similar pattern as elementary, uh, uh, as we obtained in elementary grades. Next slide, please. So the same thing uh, happens for 2022, 20, 20, 20, uh, uh, This with uh, public school, junior high school shifting to face to face, but with smaller number of regions having majority of the students in face-to-face -face classes, uh, uh, six out of the 17. And two regions, uh, regions two and three, having majority of the students in blended mode. In the case of private school, junior high school students, while some have shifted to face-to-face, -to -face, most are in blended mode, except for regions 11, 12, and 4B. Again, the proportion of the online mode has been reduced to single digits, except for NCR. Next slide, please. This. This is for senior high school. Uh, also, the pattern is substantially repeated for senior high school for uh, 2020, 2021. And uh, next slide, please. The same thing happens also for uh, uh, for school year 2020, 2023. Okay, so next slide, please. Now we, we turn to the reachability as described in the modality of learning used by the student using enrollment data. Uh, the household data is, uh, is the APIS 2020 data set. This data set has uh, enrollment data by level and by type of school, but does not include learning modality. In addition, it has data on availability of school amenities uh, that allow remote learning and income. I use measures of uh, availability of amenities for remote learning as, as indicators of reachability. Reachability for remote learning is indicated by the availability of home internet access, as well as access to TV, radio, and cell phones. Uh, let's start with home internet access. The next slide, please. This graph shows uh, the distribution of enrolled students by level and by type of school. It says that only 12% uh, of students have access to broadband internet uh, at home. I want to point out that you may have heard higher level, higher internet access from other data sources. Let me highlight that this paper refers to broadband internet access at home. The use of broadband internet at home is deliberate because that is the only connection that effectively enables continuous learning uh, uh, and, and the others are not. But what is more important is that internet access for students enrolled in private schools compared to those enrolled in public school you have see that, that the, these are, those students uh, enrolled in public schools are very much higher, uh, 60 versus 9% in elementary, 47 versus 9% in junior high school, and 37 versus 10% in senior high school. This result strongly explains this is part of the use of printed modules and online learning between public and private schools shown earlier in the enrollment uh, data by, uh, by modality. Next slide, please. So this is the, uh, I tried to explain what's the, uh, the correlates of, of broadband internet at home. Right? Uh, and uh, we know that home and area characteristics explain the availability of broadband internet at home. I use uh, the presence of the broadband internet infrastructure in the area from Albert et al, uh, that which uses the DICT household uh, ICT survey uh, and merge it with APIS using uh, regional identification. Note that the presence of broadband infra 
in that survey is measured by the proportion of surveyed barangays with broadband infrastructure, such as ISP, uh, fiber optic cable, and uh, free public and private Wi-Fi and in public uh, telecom tower. Uh, the results are revealing. What, is, uh, what are reported in the table is our standardized uh, coefficients, which should be interpreted, interpreted in standard degradation units. It shows that uh, the presence of broadband infrastructure is the most important correlate to the availability of broadband uh, internet at home. It says that uh, one standard deviation of change in the uh, presence of broadband infrastructure is correlated with 45, 0.45 standard deviation change in the availability of broadband internet at home. And this is followed by uh, per capita income at uh, 34 SD and family size is 19 SD and parents with high school education at 11 SD. Next slide, please. Uh, this, uh, in the case of TV and radio, the disparity in access is not too different between public and private schools. In addition, uh, I'd like to highlight is the, the access is quite high, 80% and above for TV and 35% and above for radio. Recall that I already mentioned that the enrollment data, this modality uh, it did not figure well. Uh, it, it, you can't even see them in the graphs. As, uh, uh, even given this high availability of these uh, uh, amenities in, in households. Next slide, please. Uh, finally, this graph shows you the availability of cell phones. Again, there is no large disparity in public and private school students. More importantly, access is almost universal. Now that you have shown uh, so far that the, the average of reachability, how about the reachability by socioeconomic class? We show this next. Next slide, please. This graph describes the reachability by, by the different access devices through income classes, which is shown is that, that there's largest parties in access of broadband uh, and computer, but not so much for TV, radio, and cell phone. These patterns have clear implications for learning across income classes uh, using these devices. Uh, now, finally, let, let us look at the quality of home support uh, for learning. Uh, our earlier analysis of PISA 2018 uh, revealed that even in a face-to-face -face learning uh, uh, mode, the quality of home support is strongly correlated with test scores. In teachers' absence, the importance of home support for learning should uh, even become more critical. I tried to describe this by the highest qualification of the parents, especially the proportion of at least high school, at least high school graduates. The average proportion of parents who have high school graduates is 10%. Uh, for the richest quintile, this is 28%. And for that, uh, lowest concern is 3%. On top of disparity in access of the remote learning devices by income class, is also the disparity in the quality of home support. Again, this will have profound implications on remote learning. Next slide. So this is the summary before proceeding. Uh, let me summarize and, uh, and in, in six statements. Most of the students in public schools use printed modules for all levels, elementary, junior high school, and senior high school at the onset of the pandemic. This has shifted to face-to-face -face last school year, for public, but not so much for the private schools where more students are on blended learning. Second, only the private schools that doesn't, uh, only in private schools does one find a considerable proportion of students on online and blended learning at the beginning of the pandemic. But those in online uh, mode has been reduced to single digit while blended learning has increased substantially in, in, in the last school year. This has significant, uh, there's significant disparity in internet access at home. Uh, particularly subset uh, broadband internet access uh, that's conducive for learning between students in public and private schools across uh, all education levels. This explains the difference in the use of learning uh, uh, between uh, modes and between public and private students. For the availability of uh, internet at home is correlated with the presence of broadband infrastructure in the area of any income. The availability of TV and radio is high uh, and there is not, but there's not much different, and there's not much difference between public and private schools. Uh, uh, this is, uh, but this is not reflected in the, in the use of the modality. Uh, this is also true uh, in, uh, in terms of uh, equality in access between public and private students in cell phones, uh, even with, but even with higher uh, availability. The widest part in the, in the distribution of the other parents in high school graduates also across income quantiles is also shown. Next slide, please. So last two slides, this is the, 
given these are the insights that we can get. One is that online learning mode will not reach most public school students. However, forward-looking uh, learning online may sound, and even if available in public schools, most students will not have the uh, not be able to access at home. I mean, I, I say online is continuous online uh, learning. Hence, the desire to build uh, online learning capacity at this time will not be most effective at present. Uh, desirable it may be over the long term. Uh, so the question that you ask, what's what's what can be used then? I think we have an answer in the next paper that will be presented. Uh, second, the primary and exigent concern is to support uh, the learning of the most popular mode is printed mode in the beginning of the uh, of the pandemic and last school year. Uh, it's uh, besides face to face is blended learning. What is needed is is supporting the most uh, uh, the printed mode and but uh, and but the World Bank uh, household survey mentioned by Vice President uh, Ballesteros and the opening remarks highlighted the lack of interaction between teachers and students uh, during the pandemic. Examples of using cell phones to improve the interaction amongst teachers, students, and parents are available. Uh, there are existing studies on the effectiveness of cell phone based interventions. So this would be presented by Noam next. Uh, uh, in this uh, forum. Uh, we cannot wait for the most of the households to have the reliable internet connection that enables online learning. Learning must continue now, and we need strategic, uh, we need to be strategic in using technology to enable learning. Third one is that it, it, uh, education delivery to TV and radio needs to be improved. The lack of take up, taking up of TV and radio-based learning, despite the high proportion of ownership, indicates that there's a need to understand what is preventing a greater use of these broadcast modalities. Next slide, please. Uh, address the disparity in the quality of home support by socioeconomic class. In the absence of teachers, home support is critical. Data indicates that the uh, disparity in the quality of home support by socioeconomic class. One possible way of addressing this is the use of learning support aids that we have uh, harnessed during the pandemic to target support for poor households. Uh, Next is address the anticipated learning disparity by socioeconomic with remote learning. Uh, since it is clear that remote learning as practice discriminates against the students of the poorer households because of lack of interaction and more inferior quality of home support, intervention that counteract this tendency should be found. And examples I've already mentioned uh, uh, the increasing the interaction between teachers, pupils, and parents using printing modules and also uh, as we will see next is the use of cell phones. Target the, the home support for children with low educated parents should also be explored. The last one is to recognize the need for a massive remedial measures to address low test scores. Even uh, uh, as we already know, even the pandemic I mentioned already that uh, uh, we were not performing well even before the pandemic. So uh, the pandemic only exacerbated the problems. Uh, um, we need to devise ways to 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 come back from that kind of this uh, of, of, of poor performance and uh, for our for our children. We need to realize that these remedial measures uh, should recognize the expected disparity in learning across income classes by focusing on students from low income households. I think that's my last slide. Thank you very much. <laughs>